Well, how about the Yankees bullpen? We can't forget about these guys. Let's talk about them. What's going on, everybody? Hope you're doing well. I hope you're getting ready for a good weekend. If you're football fans, hopefully your teams win tomorrow, too. Um, I'm going to go with the Yankees' bullpen today. We've got a lot of new additions. The bullpen's been fortified, and I think they might be done. But, with the, you know, unless something crazy happens, they happen to add a, a, a shutdown closer at the end of the game. Um, <clears throat> but I think the, yeah, the bullpen's probably done right now. I want to go over who's going to be in this bullpen. And I think I, I'm going to give the lead guys and a couple guys who are going to be pushed back. So I've done the pitchers with the starting pitchers. I've done the lineup, stars and non-stars. Take a look in the description down below. We're going to continue to talk about it. Pitchers and catchers report in four days. So things are going to pick up. There's still a lot of guys, even the big guys who haven't signed yet. So expect a flurry of activity. I don't know when, but it's going to happen. So make sure that you subscribe to this channel, especially if you're a Yankee fan. But no matter who your team is, I'll get you the news on whatever happens. So, and hit the like button if you enjoy the content too. I thank you. From the bottom of my heart for that. Now, let's get into it. Number one, <clears throat> Luis Hill is coming back from Tommy John surgery. Big arm. I think he's a guy that he can, you know, I think they would be wise to ease him back in. So I have him going three and two, 90 innings pitched, 100 Ks. He gets one to strike out an inning. And he, I, he, he might get a chance to spot to, to start. A chance to go in with short relief and a chance to go in long relief. I think it'd be good to give him a chance to do that instead of throwing him to the wolves right away. And again, if one guy I didn't bring up in this list is Luke Weaver. I added him to the rotation, but he's going to be a rover, so kind of like Luis Hill. And the second guy coming back from Tommy John surgery, Scott Efros. Okay, he's another guy who's got, I think, four controllable years left. So lucky to have this guy. Brian Cashman's done a good job of accumulating guys with controllable years over the last couple seasons. So <clears throat> Good to have. I've got him going two and two, 48 innings pitch and 52 Ks. I don't know if you notice this. I'm not putting the ERAs in here. Why? Because let's just say Angel Hernandez is on time. We know who Angel Hernandez is. And a guy, you know, gets draws a lot of bad pitches and blah, blah, blah. And he happens to walk the bases loaded on stuff that could be a strikeout. And the next guy comes in and he coughs up all the runs. Well, that. ERAs generally tacked onto these guys. So I think it's a little bit of a skewed metric in this regard, especially with a small sample size of some of these guys. So I'm keeping the ERAs out of this right now. Hope you don't mind. Now, next up, Tommy Canely. He's still here. Got another year. I have him going two and one, 51 innings pitch, a 56 strikeout. Another guy averaging more than a strikeout in an inning. Um, and he's being, and again, he brings fire. He brings attitude to the bullpen, which is good. And then Marcus Stroman is adding it to the rotation. So I, I like the fact that we have quite a few of these guys with some fire in their belly. So Kaylee, I think, is going to be one of the front liners in the bullpen. Now we have Hercules, Ian Hamilton. I don't know why head of, half his head's chopped off, but my apologies. But he's another guy that the Yankees kind of found out of nowhere. Two and two, 52 innings pitch, 58 strikeouts. He's got a big arm, very, very big arm. I hope he stays healthy because I think he'll be a valuable piece in this bullpen. He's got multiple control years as well. Next up. Johnny Lazagna, Johnny Lasagna, baby. I've got him going. He's had some makeups recently. <clears throat> okay, but I've got him going two and three with 56 innings pitch and 54 strikeouts. So, again, he's had some ups and downs, but a lot of relievers have had their ups and downs. Now, a new acquisition here, Victor Gonzalez. In a they got him in a trade with the Dodgers. They sent Trey Sweeney to the Dodgers, and they brought here Victor Gonzalez, who's got three controllable years. So he's going to be one of the lefties to help replace Wandy Peralta. Crafty lefty throws a little bit harder. But he's another guy who's got fire in his belly, too, and he, he uh, draws a lot of ground balls. I have him going 2-1 and one with 48 innings pitch and 48 strikeouts. Being another valuable piece in the bullpen. And we have another lefty, too. We'll get to it. But it's, it's nice to have all these different looks now from the righty and lefty side where it's hard throwing, crafty, combination of the two. It keeps hitters off balance. So I like how this bullpen has been assembled. Next up, the closer right now, Clay Holmes. I got him going two and two, and he's he tends to be pretty durable. So I've got him throwing sixty innings pitch and sixty seven strikeouts, and accumulating about thirty one saves. So I think he'll be in a position to get more saves. Like I said yesterday, I think this offense is well positioned to put the starters in a position to win more games and get more decisions. And I think in turn, it's going to help the bullpen too. So Clay Holmes, 
That's what I got for him. And the last acquisition here right now in a trade recently is Caleb Ferguson, our other lefty. Okay, another guy, a hard-throwing lefty who also induces a lot of grounders. <clears throat> Strikes out a, a good amount of guys, too. I have him going 5-3 and three with 62 innings pitched and 71 strikeouts. So that's a pretty robust bullpen. Now, there's a couple other guys that I didn't mention. <clears throat> Ron Marinaccio. Unfortunately, I think he's going to be pushing back a little bit. So he might be the first guy up. But when he does, I think I have him going 4-4 four and four with a 50 innings pitch and 59 strikeouts. I still like Ron Marinaccio. A lot of people do. But I think a couple guys have surpassed him a little bit now, unfortunately. But it's not to be forgotten. And then two other guys that were acquired this year. Cody Morris acquired for Esteban Flory on a trade from the, with the uh, Guardians. I've got him going 2-2 two and two with 26 innings pitched and 25 strikeouts. Again, when these guys get opportunities, and I think they will. And Cody Boteet. Came over from the Marlins. I've got him going one and two with 26 innings pitched and 25 strikeouts. So, again, bringing value from a lot of different areas in this bullpen. And I think with the guys that they have, it's going to be a pretty remarkable bullpen. Even if they don't get a Devin Williams, even if they don't get a Emmanuel Classe, even, you know, one of these guys. So, and I think this is going to be a pretty darn good bullpen and a much improved rotation, especially if some of the guys. Stay healthy, like Carlos Rodon, like Nestor Cortez. So I think they're in a good spot. I think they're in a really good spot. This team is dramatically improved. Now, I got a couple pieces of news for you before we go, okay? The Reds have uh, agreed to a two-year deal with versatile player Jonathan India, one of their exciting young players. This is right on MLBTradeRumors.com, okay? This is a $3.8 million for 2024 and $5 million in 2025. I'm surprised. I thought he would, he'd be making more than that. So this is reported on Mark Sheldon by Mark Sheldon on MLB.com. It's also on MLBTradeRumors.com. So my dynamic young player, I know he was in trade talks for a couple teams, but I guess it didn't happen. I guess they decided to keep him. It was more valuable than trading him away, especially when they were probably not going to get the value that they wanted to get back for him. Second piece of news I have for you is this is right from MLBTradeRumors.com. I'm going to read it. Major League Baseball announced that former Mets general manager Billy Epler has been placed on the ineligible list beginning immediately and throughout the entire 2024 season, including the World Series. Per the announcement, Epler violated rules regarding improper use of injured list placements, including the deliberate fabrication of injuries. Oof. Shady stuff. Shady stuff. And the associated submission of documentation for the purposes of securing multiple improper injured list placements during the 2022 in 2023 seasons. People were swinging and singing this guy's praises not so long ago. So the league added that investigation concluded that a pattern of conduct was, was at Mr. Epler's sole direction and without any involvement in club ownership or superiors. <clears throat> MLB considers the matter closed and will have no further comments. So it's all him. Okay. He's ineligible for the share. So I'm not surprised he's not back with the Mets. Okay. Tough lesson to learn, but this is what I'm talking about. Like a lot of folks will pound the Yankees, but I'm I'm relieved and I'm blessed that, that we don't have to deal with these types of situations that often with the Yankees. So makes me feel really, really happy that you know, not it doesn't make me happy to hear that it's happened to a, a former Met per person, but it makes me have you know happy to see that it's not a Yankees person. So but that's what I got for you right now. Let me know what your thoughts are of the stats for the bullpen. And let me know if you agree with me of leaving the ERAs out because I, 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 it's a skewed, it's different than the starting rotation, right? Those guys can go multiple innings, and if you, the more inning, the more you pitch, the less, the less it affects your ERA. But these guys can come in with the bases empty, load up the bases, and then leave with two outs, and then the next guy can come and cough up all the runs, and the, and the guy that coughed up all the runs doesn't get the ERA hit. The guys before him do, so it's kind of crazy. So that this for that reason I left the ERAs out of this, and I hope you don't mind. So, but let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know who your picks are in the Super Bowl. Okay, I'm gonna come over to my. Uh, I'm gonna put in my Super Bowl pick, uh, previews and predictions on my football channel, Empire Sports, the Empire State Tripod, excuse me, and come take a look at that channel if you haven't done that yet as well. But uh, have a great day, everybody. Have a great weekend. See y'all next time.